Hello Ice and Fire Nerds, this is Chris and this is going to be another Game of Thrones theory slash idea video that it literally just popped in my head about 15 minutes ago. So there are some rumors that we may see the tourney of Hall in Season 7 of Game of Thrones and basically that's where Lyanna met Rhaegar Targaryen and of course produced this guy right over here, Lord Snow. So anyway, if we already know that story and we already know that they fell in love and now we've already seen RLJ, the confirmation that Jon Snow is in fact the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna, a song of ice and fire, why do we need to see it? Dracarys. Alright guys, so I'm not going to go over the Tourney of Hall in depth, I will give a quick overview because there are a million videos about what the Tourney of Hall was, what happened, we had, you know, Rhaegar and Lyanna there, we had him giving the crown of blue winter roses to Lyanna over his wife, Ilya Martell. We had, of course, Hal and Reed getting his ass beat. And then, of course, that led to the Night of the Laughing Tree, most likely being Lyanna Stark. But the point being is we kind of already know all that. Book readers know a lot more detail about it. It goes into a lot of things on how potentially Rhaegar met Lyanna and fell in love with her and vice versa. And even on the show, it's been mentioned plenty of times. It's kind of the backstory to Robert's Rebellion on how Lyanna and Rhaegar fell in love in the first place. It was mentioned by Jojen to Bran on the way to see Blood Raven, and he was surprised that Bran had never heard the story and of course we got a little bit of the story with Littlefinger and Sansa in the crypts of Winterfell where Sansa basically said yeah Rhaegar chose my aunt but then he kidnapped her and he raped her and Littlefinger looked at her like not exactly. So anyway, the point being is we know the result of said union between Rhaegar and Lyanna, then why do we need to actually see it in the show? Is it just to show Rhaegar Targaryen? Now, I personally have a feeling we'll probably see Rhaegar Targaryen in some flashback in some way, shape, or form because he has been talked up so much. But again, on the TV show at least, why do we need to see that on screen if we already basically know the outcome? They met... <laughs> And we have Mr. Snow as a result, the Song of Ice and Fire, potentially Azor Ahai, the last hero, one of the saviors of our story, however it goes down. So if we do see the turning of Heron Hall, obviously this is in the past, and we're going to see it through Bran's eyes since he's the only one in our story who can actually go visit the past. Anyway, we also know from the Tower of Joy scene that he can kind of affect the past, and Blood Raven tried to warn him against this by saying the ink is dry. So what if the turning of Heron Hall went down a little bit differently, and that's why we have to see what happened? So let's say that we had the whole turning of Heron Hall, it basically happened like we know. And then of course we have the Night of the Laughing Tree and that is where Helen Reed got his ass beat by a couple of squires. And then some mystery knight with mismatched armor as well as a shield with a sigil on it of a weirwood tree laughing came in and kind of avenged Helen Reed with a booming voice and defeated those three squires knights that they served. And then rode off and disappeared and everybody wondered who the hell it was. Ares the second Targaryen of course, already being batshit crazy, thought this was one of his enemies and sent his son Rhaegar to find out who this knight was. Now book readers know that nobody ever discovered who this knight was but there are a lot of theories that more than likely it was Lyanna Stark because she was a she-wolf, she was a badass, she was kind of a warrior chick like Arya, and she was also very good on horseback, which is also very important because really all you need for jousting is to be a good horse rider, not a good warrior, so to speak. So anyway, the point being that more than likely that was Lyanna Stark, Rhaegar probably found out about it, didn't tell his father, and that's when he fell in love with her and vice versa. Yada yada yada, we have Jon Snow. But what if that didn't go down exactly like that and Bran goes back to a vision in Season 7 and sees the tourney of Hall and sees the Night of the Laughing Tree perhaps, sees Ares send his son Rhaegar to go find out who the hell it was, and Rhaegar couldn't find out who it was, he just found the armor perhaps or whatever. Bran realizes, you know what, Jon's important to our story here, Jon is potentially the savior of the world, so what if Bran kind of went and affected the past just a little bit to make sure Rhaegar found out that was Lyanna. Therefore, he finds Lyanna. They fall in love. And later, of course, when he won the tournament, unseating Sir Barristan Selmy, he actually gives the crown of roses to Lyanna Stark instead of his wife, Elia Martell. So, in a sense, basically, Bran is ensuring that Jon Snow is born. To me, that's the only reason we really need to see this story visually on the show, because the show, again, simplifies things. We have a lot of stuff from the books cut out, obviously. But if we're going to see this flashback in the show, I don't think it's going to be just to see Lyanna and Rhaegar's love story. We already have an idea that's what happened. So, if we're going to see that, there's got to be something there that we're missing or something that's got to be changed, perhaps. But anyway, that was just an idea I had that Bran needs to go back to see this vision, and we need to see this vision because it was going to go down differently, perhaps. Therefore, Rhaegar meets Lyanna Stark and falls in love with her and vice versa, and the savior of the world, or the Azor Ahai, or the last hero, or whoever in the hell you want to label Jon Snow, even though I think it's a collection of people that's going to save the world, ends up being born in the first place. And of course, again, you could take this a step further and say this potentially sets up Robert's Rebellion eventually after Rhaegar supposedly kidnapped Lyanna, 
Anne actually gets Danny sent across the Narrow Sea after she's born on Dragonstone, and of course years later ends up marrying Khal Drogo, getting dragon eggs as wedding gifts, and then of course hatches those dragons, therefore coming back across the Narrow Sea to Westeros and saving the fucking world with dragons. So anyway guys, that's all I had. I just want to throw it out there for you guys to chew on. I don't necessarily believe it, but I think it's kind of cool, but at the same time I don't want to see too many like time loops and all that kind of time travel shit to bring too much sci-fi into it like we had with the Hodor thing. But at the same time, a couple well-placed time loops like that where Bran has to affect the past could be kind of cool, but just not overdone. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. What did Bran do? Did he cause Rhaegar and Lyanna to get together to ensure Jon's birth and therefore set up Robert's Rebellion in the first place and then therefore make sure that dragons came back to the world via Danny? I mean, that's a long stretch, but I think it's kind of cool to think about. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you for all the support. I really, really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.